By the end of this video, you'll know if you can beat Kingdom Hearts 3 without jumping. A few years back, I did a similar challenge with Kingdom Hearts 2, and of course, the first question everyone had on their minds as soon as I finished that video is that if it was possible with Kingdom Hearts 3. And of course, I'm the person with enough time in my hands to get to the bottom of it. In general, Kingdom Hearts 2's level design is a lot more flat, making it a lot easier to get through the game. Most of the levels are just these empty spaces with treasure chests just lying around, although there were certainly some moments in the game that did give me trouble, like this moment in Beast Castle where my entire run was nearly killed. I have a link to that video in the description description below if you want to check out that challenge. But now it's time to step foot into the future. Sora in Kingdom Hearts 3 is an entirely different specimen this time around. So we're going to try and answer this question for this entry of the series. Kingdom Hearts 3 is the biggest game in the series, both in terms of scope and actual level design. Unlike Kingdom Hearts 2, the layouts are a lot more elaborate. Although Sora himself is a lot more elaborate this time around too. To get started, we're going to lay down some ground rules. First, what I mean by no jumping is that I can't explicitly use the circle button in order to jump. It's a very distinct animation when Sora jumps on the player's volition. And of course, it's important to mention that because because of a lot of Sora's combos, he will eventually leap into the air automatically. I'm not counting this as a jump in the same way that I didn't count it in my Kingdom Hearts 2 playthrough. The only thing that counts as a jump in this game is when I press the circle button and he jumps in the air. Sora is allowed to have the rest of his kit at his disposal. As long as I'm not pressing circle, the run can continue without any issues. But the truth is, is this even possible? Let me know in the comment section below for your predictions of this run. I decided to try it out and put my findings in this video. To answer the question once and for all, is it possible to beat Kingdom Hearts 3 without jumping? For this playthrough, I decided to set the difficulty on to beginner, mainly because this isn't an exhibition of how saucy I am as a player, but rather a showcase if this type of playthrough is even possible. And it makes my life so much easier to not to have to worry about challenging enemies along the way. This is strictly for science! Also, I'm starting directly from scratch. No carrying over my extra keyblades or selfie poses, not sure how that would really change the playthrough. I don't know, but I feel like that could lead to something down the line, so I just wanted to start completely fresh from the beginning. Now, let's jump into Kingdom Hearts 3. From the start, we see Sora beginning his dive to the heart sequence. Fortunately, the ground is just a flat floor with nothing to really interact with. I decided to to pause time and give myself a few jumps before the run officially begins. I needed to get it out of my system and completely remove the circle button from my mental gymnastics. Moving forward, we create our build for Sora and keep it pushing. So for context, I'm currently playing on the PC version of the game, and I'm constantly running mods so I can create content for you guys. But I thought I removed all the mods when I started this playthrough. Then I noticed right at the beginning that the HUD is completely removed. Having the HUD removed makes it much easier to get HD footage of the game without anything in the way. But then I do realize I do need an actual HUD to get things done in this playthrough. Otherwise, I'm blindly selecting magic and blasting through things for no reason. Although, I'm not in any position where I can save just yet, so we have to keep it pushing. Funny enough, in this first battle sequence, the command HUD appears, but everything else is gone, including his HP. Now we face against our first hurdle, which honestly isn't really a hurdle at all. Sora can run up walls, making this so much easier to get around the world. It's a mechanic that was developed for Kingdom Hearts 3, making Sora more mobile than ever before. I honestly think the wall run is enough to carry me through the entire game. I'm gonna save real quick and come back with the HUD being nice and clean. Ah, there we go. Now we're back and everything is exactly where it should be. In Olympus, there are these beginning enemy encounters that don't require me to jump. These are fairly open spaces that are around to teach the basics of the game. After clearing out all the Heartless and jumping onto the Trinity Sled, we arrive on the rooftops. Fortunately, it's just focusing on making our way down, so gravity is doing most of the work. Another Trinity Sled later, I discover that Sora has the Air Slide ability. So even if I'm in the air, I can guide Sora where he's going to fall. This playthrough is gonna be free. Even though Olympus is burned to the ground, Sora can still successfully run on the walls and take out enemies without any issue. That's one thing about Kingdom Hearts 3 in general is that there's a heavy focus on aerial combat. Most of Sora's moves eventually lead him into the air, mainly why Sora is so floaty to begin with. We safely make our way through Thieves by taking out the Rock Golem, and now it's time for us to scale Mount Olympus. I honestly got really nostalgic while running through here, from back in the day from one of the earliest Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers, and I'm playing this on PC in the highest settings I could possibly run, and it just looks so beautiful. This is also the first instance where Sora can auto parkour over certain rocks. Fortunately, I don't need to jump on them as Sora just automatically snaps. Another way forward, we have the battle against the Rock Titan. This one mainly focuses on Sora's running up the walls, not requiring me to jump at all. I mean, it's a bit more difficult to navigate, but nothing really game-changing. I decided to skip all these baby heartless because they're all babies and to go throw hands with the rock. After literally shattering his ankles, making our climb up and hitting him with a roller coaster, it's just smooth sailing into Olympus. Now, usually when I'm in this section, I try to jump out of the way, but there was something that just snapped in my monkey brain that made it so clear. Why don't I just dash into them with water? And then I constantly get slapped around because I cannot get my composure. Anyway, the battle is done, so I decide to make my break for Zeus. We get to the top and learn how to air step. It's great since this is going to be our main method of transportation for the rest of the game, making it so Sora can dip to his destinations within a few seconds. No need to jump either, just press the triggers in the air and the game does the rest. Honestly, this playthrough is looking like a shoe-in. We move forward and decide to put the beats on the Titans. I love this little platform they put in the center here, making this battle much easier than before. I can imagine this battle would have taken way longer since I wasn't able to jump. Now check this out. 
Tell me why after I beat both the Lava and the Ice Titan, I go up against the Tornado Titan, and he decided to turn my PC into Delta Airlines because my fans started to scream and my frame rate went right into the toilet. Mind you, I have a pretty decent computer and this has never happened before. Of course, my PC knows I'm trying to make history and just sabotages me. So I try to reset the game and turns out that this is just this section right here. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure since I was too lazy to reset my PC. Eventually, I fought through the lag and was able to defeat the Tornado Titan without jumping. I mean, it's fairly difficult to jump in a place without a floor. Or anyway, afterward, we battle against the demon tower as Riku for a second. It's just this one room and we absolutely melted him. And now it's time to make our way to Twilight Town. I'm ready to clear out this area real quick and whoa. <laughs> I guess I forgot to take off all of my Kingdom Hearts mods. This Ventus armor mod is attached to his Kingdom Hearts 3 model, and no wonder I couldn't see it when I was in his Kingdom Hearts 2 model in Olympus. Regardless, this mod looks fantastic. Eh, I'll keep it in. It doesn't really change anything for the game too much. After clearing out all the nobodies on the street and taking on the Demon Tide, I still haven't needed to jump. The auto combos are a game changer and give Sora so much range on his attacks. Even if my enemy is high up in the air, I can simply lock on them and make my way to them with very little issue. Oh my god! <laughs> Okay, so I didn't clear out every mod like I thought. So I forgot I replaced the bistro with a McDonald's. I mean, I honestly thought the town could use a little fat food in their lives. I know for a fact that Sora would indulge in a happy meal every once in a while. There's even this little logo on the side that sticks out from the wall. Okay, no more distractions. Oh yeah, they brought Thomas the Tank Engine into Twilight Town. And oh my God, his face looks so creepy in this stare. I do think that's all the mods I have at Twilight Town at the moment. Yeah, gosh, I hope so. Since they're all cosmetic, let's just keep, keep it moving. In general, Twilight Town doesn't really give me any issues. After making our way back for the mansion, we need to run around and collect ingredients. Just auto run up the walls, making it much easier to get to the rooftops. Jumping just feels like a small quality of life update to get around easier. Twilight Town is now completed and we make our way over to Toy Box. So I just want to show you a mistake I did real quick. Right upon gaining control of Sora at the start of this world, I immediately jump on accident. Look, <laughs> that's me. I mean, that era doesn't really change the fate of the run. That was just me having fat sauce his finger. Just look away, you didn't see anything. After clearing out the Heartless in Andy's room, it's time to head over to Galaxy Toys. Before that though, I take a moment to let gravity do the thing and let Sora bounce on this trampoline. He honestly looks like he's having the time of his life. And he's still not jumping, he's just letting physics do its thing. Galaxy Toys time. Here we're introduced to the Gigas where Sora can jump inside and control these mechs. Each mech has its own special abilities including punching, dashing, and shooting its blaster. It also has a booster ability which is essentially the jump button for the mech suit. I mean it's located right on the circle button and everything, so I'm not going to be using the booster slash jump button while in the mech. We clear out all the enemies and make our way deeper into the store. More Heartless appear, but the level design is more of the same. Sora can run on the shelves to reach much higher locations if he needs to. Eventually, we make our way into the vents where Sora can ride the wind up into the next level. We enter the dollhouse room and quickly put her into the ground. Just focus on locking on her and Sora will follow her with every Keyblade swing to the ends of the earth. After the doll has been defeated, we progress through the world and enter Verum Rex. No need to jump here since you just wait at the bottom floor and start blasting from there. Like, there's no reason for me to push forward at this moment. After we break out the the next section requires Sora to make his way to the top of a small pink door. There was a moment where I didn't think this was possible since Sora didn't immediately run up the wall, but after moving around a little bit, I was finally able to make it to the very top. Even this small threat was nothing for Sora. It was at this moment that I knew that the rest of the playthrough was going to be a cakewalk. Sora has so many options at his disposal in order to get him around. Between the air step, air slides, and the ability to track auto combos, there was nothing that could stop him. Being able to jump is just a small accessory at this point. I was set to believe that Kingdom Hearts 3 could be beaten without jumping, but then everything stopped at a screeching halt. I entered the Kid Corral, and now we need Sora to use a mech to move around some blocks. These blocks would then be used as a platform needed in order to move on to the next section. The first set of blocks are right here at the entrance, with little to no threat ahead. We battle against some Heartless and get the blocks where they need to go. Then there's this next chunk of blocks hidden here in this dice section. Grabbing these blocks will build the structure even further, and now we only need one more pair of blocks to reach the top. The final blocks can be located at the very top of the playpen section of Kid Corral. Although, in order for me to get up there with a the mech, I will need to jump. Wait, no, no, no. No, 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 that can't be right. There has to be a way. So I walk out a little bit and decide to survey the land. I notice that the blocks are located above at the top of the slide, and I decide to take a further look and investigate on foot. You can flow motions at the top of the slide, but blocks are preventing you from getting any closer. Not only that, but the mech is way too big to fit in this doorway, let alone in the slide all the way through. Let's make our way back down. I'm gonna head to the top on foot and see what I can find. Upon arrival, I get ambushed by a bunch of enemies. I can easily get up here though because Sora has the ability to run on the walls. Although I cannot run on the walls while using a Giga. To get the Giga's 
to the top floor, the only way to do it is by boostering. And since boostering is attached to the circle button and involves the character moving in the air in an upward fashion, that is an illegal move. It's a jump. Oh God. Okay, no problem. Uh, I have a few different ideas. Uh, there's a mech located at the bottom of the playpen, but there's no platform or anything to help me get up. Although on the second floor, there's this red hidden mech right here. That saves me a few flight of steps, but I start to run into the same issue. There's no way for me to go directly up. I end up finding this staircase and try to clip onto it using the tackle feature. I usually get one or two steps on, but I can't get any higher than that. No matter how hard I tried, that's as far up as the mech was gonna go. Then I had another idea. Since the blocks were attached to the top of the slide, what if I bring a mech through the slide from the very top? There's this small platform at the side of the room that Sora can stand on. It's pretty close to the same level as the slide, so maybe the mech can make it up there. Although I have no way of getting a mech up there myself. Since I can't use the booster, all the mechs in the rooms are grounded for the time being. So I decided to leave the world and come back to reset all the spawns. I ran back up to the little corner of the room and waited until one of the mechs noticed me. The idea was to get them to come up here and steal their armor. Although since I'm so high up, I thought they would never notice me. But behold, this purple mech took the bait and now we're gonna rob him blind. More mechs decide to make their way up and I beat them down and place them in the corner. Like if I mess up this jump, I now have a few more options to choose from. And now it is time for the moment of truth. I line up the screen and take the plunge. Although I do it a bit early and end up on the slide. I'm slowly making my way up, but then the mech gets caught on one of these metal rings and I can't move forward anymore. So I try to dash my way up and unfortunately fall right back to the ground. No worries, I'll just go back up and use the mechs that I was building up in the corner. Oh wait, if you disappear for too long, the mechs will also disappear. Fortunately, it wasn't too long before another Heartless appeared and offered up his body as a vessel. This time, I try to jump on the cactus platform before to line it up, but I end up falling off for a second time. It was at this moment that I needed to call a timeout. I needed to find out if it was even possible to make it to the very top. Can I even move those blocks if I'm outside of the playpen? And during this timeout, I discovered that it's impossible. You can make it to the top of the slide, but the command to remove the blocks would not appear. So all of that work would be for nothing. And then I started to get desperate. I ended up summoning Ralph, thinking I could make a bridge or something for the mech to ride on. But then that didn't end up working out because... Why would that even work, you big bozo? So from what I'm getting at is that there's no way for me to get the mech here to the top without using the booster. Which I ruled out because it is a form of jumping. I'd feel grimy about it. It is the circle button. That is the jump button. Like, why did it have to be attached to the circle button? It's jumping. This is the way that mechs jump around. It would be cheating for me personally, which means I cannot beat Kingdom Hearts 3 without jumping. Look, if there's anyone out there who can get the mech to the top of the playpen without using the booster, then be my guest. I've been cracking my head at this for weeks, but that's the conclusion I've come to. There is no way to beat Kingdom Hearts 3 without jumping. Of course, people can apply their own rules and call it so that the booster doesn't count as a jump, but that just, that's too, that's too messy for me, man. That's too messy. It's that damn circle button. They had to share the circle button. Well, Sorry about that, I guess that this is a pretty lame conclusion. You can beat Kingdom Hearts 2 without jumping. You can't beat Kingdom Hearts 3 without jumping. Maybe Kingdom Hearts 1. Maybe that one will do it. Maybe that one will have a better ending for you. Oh, come on!